Dear ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. I hope that all of you are doing well. I'm Dominic Blattner, the ITDF High Performance Manager, and I'm very delighted to warmly welcome all of you to our 38 ITDF High Performance and Development webinar with the topic Coaching Pathway. But before going over to the introduction of our panelists, I want to talk shortly about our webinar code of the Q&A. To all the attendees, please leave your questions in the Q&A section. Our panelists will try to answer as many as possible in the question and answer part of the webinar. Thank you very much for taking care of this. And now over to the introduction of our panelists for today. It's a great pleasure and honor for us to warmly welcome two of the most successful coaches in their fields. I would like to start with uh, Viorel Filimon from Romania. His achievement as a coach are 25 medals at senior European championships, nine times gold, seven times silver, and nine times bronze. Three times European champion with the Romanian women's team, two times silver medals at the European Games in 2019, 42 medals at the European Youth Championships in the cadet and junior categories, five participations at the Olympic Games, two nominations for the Table Tennis Star Coach at the IDTF Star Awards in 2015 and 2017. And last but not least, he was the coach of the World All-Star Women Team in 2010. And he will be today uh, translated by Mrs. Miora, who is a sport psychologist from the Romanian Table Tennis Federation. So hello and welcome to both of you. Hello. Hello. Hello to everybody. Thank you very much. And now over to our second panelist, Danny Heister from Netherlands. His achievement as a player, he won the bronze medal at the European Championships in men's doubles in 2002. He was the winner of the English Open in men's doubles in 1999. He took the fifth place in the men's singles at the IDTF Pro Tour Finals in 2002. Uh, he had participations in 12 uh, World Championships and three Olympic Games, and he is a multiple Dutch national champion in the singles and doubles events. And now over to his achievements as a coach with Borussia Düsseldorf. He's a multiple winner of the European Champions League, a winner of the ETTU Cup, multiple champion of the German Bundesliga, and a multiple winner of the German Cup. Hello and welcome, Danny. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Danny and uh, Viorel for taking the time. It's nice to meet you. And last but not least, I would like to warmly welcome our ITTF High Performance Ali Coach Massimo Costantini. So pass over to you, Max, and I kindly ask you, after your welcoming words, to kick off our interaction with the two great panelists. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dominic. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Viorel, the, um, the translator today we have uh, with him, and uh, um, Danny, for your, kind, uh, <clears throat> for your kindness to be here with us for this great interaction, uh, coach, uh, coach Pathway. Uh, judging by, the, by, by the, the, the things you have achieved, uh, it is amazing. It's an amazing palmares, and we know long-time friends. So I would like to, to start uh, this interaction uh, uh, just uh, uh, to tell us uh, a little bit more about your uh, background, you know, your, your own short uh, presentation. We can start with, uh, with uh, Viorel, of course. Yes, I, uh, I try to, to speak uh, little in English because uh, my English is not very, very well. And uh, I want to help me, Mrs., because uh, it's easy to, to say what I want to, to speak uh, about table tennis, ab about my career in, in table tennis. And uh, yeah, Miara, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm uh, 68 de ani. I'm 60, uh, 60, 80 years old. Uh, sunt căsătorit uh, de 
uh, aproape 50 de ani. Married for almost 60 years now. Am doi copii. I have two kids. Unul din ei, mulți dintre dumneavoastră îl cunoaște, Andrei Filimon. You know Andrei Filimon, my son. Most uh, of you, you know him. Și trei nepoți. And I have three uh, grandkids. Cel mai mare 11 ani, cel mai mic 5 ani. The oldest is the, um, 12 and the youngest is the 5. Și cred că cel mic va fi un mare jucător. And I believe the youngest could be a great champion. De- deja, deja a început să joace tenis de masă de vreo 8 luni de zile. He already started playing table tennis for 8 uh, months now. Din cauza că eu am fost izolat uh, Eliza m-a băgat, m-a băgat în izolare. Eliza a helped him uh, um, isolating because uh, the, uh, the coronavirus. Și am început să joc cu cel mic care, vă spun, face niște progrese fantastice fiind și stângaci, undeva cu siguranță îl moștenește pe tată. And I started playing with uh, Vladimir, who is lefty, and uh, for sure he could uh, be a very successful player. Ok, deci uh, am uh, absolvit liceul în Buzău, orașul uh, în care am și învățat tenis de masă. I graduated high school in Buzău, where, uh, where I learned table tennis. După care am uh, mers uh, la uh, facultate, la universitate. Then I went to Galați University. Unde am studiat uh, facultatea de mecanică în cadrul Institutului Politehnic Galați. When I uh, studied the faculty of uh, shipbuilding uh, mechanics from the Galați Polytechnic Institute. În această perioadă, concomitent cu studiile de inginerie, in the same time, am urmat și școala de antrenori la București. I, uh, I uh, went to uh, coach uh, school from Bucharest. Astfel încât uh, am uh, absolvit această școală înainte de a termina studiile universitare de inginerie. And I actually graduated from uh, coach school before uh, graduating the university, technical university. În 1974 am venit, m-am căsătorit și am venit în Constanța. I got married in 1974 and I uh, came to Constanta. Unde am început pentru a treia oară activitatea de tenis de masă. Where I started for the third time the coaching career in table tennis. Uh, ca jucător am început la Buzău. As a player I started in Buzău. Printr-o întâmplare. By a chance, let's say it. Unde printr-o fantă de lumină. That's, uh, that's an interesting uh, thing uh, I saw through a uh, light slide in a window. Am uh, vedeam o minge care trecea de o parte și de alta unui fileu. I saw a small ball crossing uh, over a net. Fără să văd ce se petrece înăuntru, deoarece fereastra era închisă. With, without actually knowing what was going on uh, in the room because the, the window was closed and I only had that uh, slide view. După o perioadă am reușit să intrăm în acea sală, o săliță în care era o singură masă, de fapt, improvizată o sală, nu era o sală specială de tenis de masă. After a while I got, uh, I got to enter, to actually enter in that room and it was only a table there. Și abia atunci am realizat ce, de unde venea mingea aceea și se plimba de la o, de la o paletă la cealaltă. And uh, only then I realized what was going on in there with the ball. În scurt timp, uh, cu prieteni de acolo din, din, din locul unde locuiam. After a short uh, time, I managed uh, with uh, several uh, kids from the area I was living in. Am reușit să intrăm înăuntru și încet, încet să încercăm și noi să facem ceea ce văzusem prin acea fantă de lumină. We began to, uh, we started to, to learn how to do what we saw through that window and when we got, what we saw when we got inside. Cam așa am și început tenisul de masă, de fapt. This is how actually I got started with table tennis. Uh, în continuare, deci, uh, am reușit, eu știu, să 
Deci după terminarea universității, totuși mi-am dat seama că pe undeva îmi place prea mult tenisul de masă și ceea ce n-am reușit eu ca jucător. After graduating from uh, university, I realized that I loved too much what I uh, have experienced as a table tennis player. Uh, și mi-am îndreptat atenția sau am crezut eu de atunci că aș putea să uh, creez, să formez, uh, eu știu, jucători care să devină mai buni decât am fost eu. And I uh, focused uh, my uh, activity and my career on training others to be able to do something uh, I uh, didn't manage to do. Cam, cam asta, cam asta s-a, s-a întâmplat cu începutul meu și pe undeva întreaga carieră a mers pe baza de a progresa în continuu, de a învăța, de a me perfecționa. This was my uh, starting career and uh, my motto was, uh, was something like uh, always um, developing myself, always uh, paying attention to progress. Și încet, încet, pas cu pas, am reușit de, am ajuns la vârsta pe care o am, 68. And, and step by step I, uh, made, I made it this far at 78. Și încă, simt, și, încă, și încă simt că pot să mai lucrez și să fac încă, să mai fiu util tenisului de masă, cel puțin din orașul meu și din România. And I feel like going. Oh, ok, ok, great, well, <laughs> great, great presentation. Uh, um... And uh, we we can understand uh, how much work uh, it was behind, you know, before uh, achieving all those uh, uh, all those uh, titles and uh, successes. Uh, Danny, how about you? Uh, you you hey, please don't don't tell that you beat me several times in the career. I just uh, leave it that one, and not not relevant actually. <laughs> so please. Okay. Uh, uh, Your your short uh, short presentation uh, and uh, how everything started for you. Yeah, um, my name is Danny Heister. Uh, I have three kids. Uh, I'm almost 50 years old, 49. Um, I started my career in table tennis uh, when I was a kid because my father uh, was playing. And um, we were playing in the garage, and uh, he teach me the small things of table tennis, how to have my record and to put the ball on the record and go up the stairs and go back. And um, after I became a champion in, in my small city, um, then I was selected by uh, the national team uh, to go for some practices. And then everything go go really really fast. Um, I mean, I was playing in the Dutch first league when I was uh, 14 years old, and um, and from that time I think I start my my career. I played my uh, first European uh, Youth Championships, and uh, since that time, um, yeah, I think I played two times in cadets and three times in juniors. And when I was junior, Massimo, then was our time. We had a lot of camps <laughs> in, in Italy, in Fuji, I can remember. And um, yeah, it goes like this. Um, many practice, many trainers uh, involved. Uh, you know, Milan Stenzel, Jan Flick, um, also other trainers. And from that time, after that time, um, I go everywhere. In Holland was not a real situation that I could practice. I always had to go out um, to to practice uh, in Grenzau, in France. Um, I travel all over the world, try to get some information from uh, other trainers and um, and really check out what I can use, what I cannot use, and um, yeah, that was what's going um, how it was going till I go to Gönnen, uh, that was in the German league, before I played two years in France, two years in, in Würzburg. And then on 24, really my career maybe started to have more structure. It was um, in, the, in the time that uh, 
Helmut Hampel uh, was in Gunnen, the time with Timo Boll, when he was started. Um, I played seven years with him in the, in the team. I saw growing him up from uh, 14, 15 years old till uh, number one in the world. Um, yeah, it was a good process. And also in that time, um, I made some, some good results um, and I learned a lot from, uh, from Helmut Hampel. After that, I got a little bit older, and then uh, Düsseldorf asked me uh, if I want to be a kind of mentor of a young group. Um, and it was a quite funny story. Um, when he uh, asked me to come to Düsseldorf, this young team was standing really low in the league. And um, in the end, they became champion. It was a real unbelievable process. And after that, I joined Düsseldorf for four years. Um, and then I had really problems with my Agilis. Um But the connection between player and, and, and trainer was the last years in, in Gönnen. Um, I was a little bit between the players and the trainer. I was always helping the players. Eh? This is also, I think, what I'm good at, to help the players uh, to, to, to go on. And, um, and in that time, I thought already, okay, it can be that I want to be a coach. And uh, then the, the call from Düsseldorf came to be like, eh, what I said, uh, an older player, uh, to like be a mentor for the players. Um, and also this role, I really liked you know, to, to help other young players. Then uh, I stopped my career as table tennis player and um, I mixed a little bit with national junior teams I start. I made the, the, the course in the Dutch, uh, from the Dutch association. Um, and then they offered me a job like uh, to open an internet in the national sports center. Also with every other sports uh, they start the National Sports Center in, in Papendal. And yeah, that's for me start, you know, knowing nothing really about yeah, to be a trainer, about the internet and to have to, to find my way. And I'm really grateful from the Dutch Association that they give me this opportunity to, um, how you say, how to find out how I have to do it. And I learned in this three, four years, I learned really a lot because we had really one time a month, we had the coaching sessions from the best psychologue in, in Holland, from the best um, physical uh, teachers. Um, and there really, I got many ideas. We had uh, sessions with, with other sports, with volleyball, with, uh, um, say, um, Volleyball, handball, uh, badminton, really many different and other, things. Other sports. And yeah. mm -hmm. Other sports, and it was really to, to, to know what are their problems, what is my problem. Uh, and so you can develop yourself. And this was really so, useful for me, this period. And so then, then you, I was in a period, yeah? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, I was just uh, catching this. Uh, um, because after uh, several experiences, as you, you have mentioned, this, this question is for both of you. Maybe, Danny, you can continue. Uh, well, did you expect coaching would have been your, uh, your future job, your, uh, you know, to be professional as, uh, as a coach? So uh, it was a sort of a planning or maybe, you know, results uh, make uh, make coaches confidence that okay that is my my way it's 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 my future it's my job i love it and then uh, uh, so did you expect to have this kind of a career uh, then you can start and then followed by by fiorel yeah yeah the, what i wanted to say and that's exactly the point when you came when i was practicing of playing in in Gönne the last two years i had the feeling okay i, I like table tennis. Yeah, I know it from uh, when I was 12 years old yeah? and um, uh, yeah, it's my, it's my life yeah? and, and you develop yourself in different ways and also after that I developed myself uh, as a coach, like I said, with many seminars and, and this kind of things and 
when I worked this four years um, in um, the national team, um, I, I remember I was sitting on the what was it Luxembourg Open on the on the tribune, and I was thinking by myself, okay, what will be my next step? What will be happen? Um, where I can more develop? What can I do? And uh, and at that time, really, it was that day. Uh, Borussia Düsseldorf called me and asked me to be coach of, of Borussia Düsseldorf because they saw I developed myself, um, eh, they saw my um, my past, what I did. And the most thing, that's a little bit more your question, Massimo, was like when I started to be coach in the junior time uh, with the national junior team, I speak with a lot of, uh, I have spoken with a lot of coaches uh, about to find a way, what is my vision of table tennis, what is at meetings with, with Helmut Hampel, with uh, Blondel from France, with Peter Satz, he was working for Denmark. You know, I'm also a guy to, to try to get everywhere information. I look to other sports, to volleyball, to football, you know, to, to find uh, a way um, to, to make a vision um, of yourself and Okay, I will give now to um, Mr. Philemon, uh, because after that uh, I can tell uh, about what for me is really interesting, but I really had the feeling, okay, I want to be a coach. Yeah, we have, we have actually, we have a lot of questions for both of you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, yes, confrontation with other sports, other coaches is always the, the, the key, I mean, to, to enrich, to improve. Uh, and to learn, actually, you know. So, how about uh, how about you, Fiorel? Um, what was this uh, coaching uh, expecting to be your job uh, or uh, something else? Normally, in in, uh, <laughs> in, uh, in prima fase, nu mă gândeam la. At the beginning, I wasn't thinking about it. Dar yeah. încet, încet. But step by step. Având în vedere că am ajutat mult pe antrenorul meu cu care am început să joc tenis de masă. Because I helped my former coach when I started to play table tennis. Și prin faptul că am jucat foarte mult și am îndrumat pe sora mea mai mică. And because I, uh, I am, uh, was a coach for my younger sister care ulterior a devenit campioană națională și undeva rezultate destul de bune la nivelul României și chiar internațional. Who later became national champion, champion and then she got uh, very good results uh, on international level. Am început să cred că aș putea să mă perfecționez și să ajut și alții copii tineri ca să poată să devină jucători buni. I began I started believing that uh, I could improve myself and uh, be able to help other kids grow and uh, develop themselves. Apoi după ce am terminat uh, facultatea, unde am învățat foarte multe uh, m- despre mecanică, despre matematică, After graduating from university, when I learned a lot of things about the mathematics and physics, mi-am dat seama că tenisul de masă este unul dintre sporturile de mare precizie care, în care se găsesc toate aceste învățăminte sau, mă rog, cunoștințe ale, ale științelor exacte și mai ales în fizică. I realized that table tennis was actually a very accurate sport and uh, physics uh, is very much applied in table tennis. Și am început să realizez că înțelegând foarte bine fiecare mecanism din acesta, uh, începând de la viteză, viteză de reacție, frecare, uh, mă rog, uh, unghiuri, uh, accelerație și așa mai departe. Uh, all the information got from the university, like uh, speed, um, uh, collision, um, uh, uh, reaction, spin, uh, effect, um, uh, friction force, uh, was all very common to table tennis and uh, the comprehension of all of it uh, could be very much applied in uh, learning table tennis. 
Și în situația asta am realizat că pot să transmit toate aceste cunoștințe acelor copii la anumite nivele de vârstă, pentru că nu toată lumea are, capa are capacitatea de a, a înțelege aceste lucruri. I got convinced that I'm able to pass on uh, my players all my knowledge uh, um, ad uh, adjusted to every level of them, uh, age level, comprehension level. Uh, deci toate aceste cunoștințe uh, preluate de către tinerii sportivi pot să-i aducă în niște situații de a înțelege în, în uh, interior tot... Uh, tot acest joc. All this information um, facilitate the ability of a player to understand the, 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 the game from the inside. De multe ori copilul de multe ori copilul lui explici anumite lucruri, dar nivelul lor, nivelul lui de cunoștințe, de înțelegere, nu poate să uh, preia și să, să facă să să pună în aplicație tot, toate, aceste, toate aceste metode și atunci trebuie să găsești... We experience as a trainer a situation like this. We explain uh, so many times to a child several things, yet is, uh, he's not uh, capable to fully understand what's, uh, inside, what's, uh, what is inside the, uh, the um, a shot, what's inside the technique, the technique. So we need uh, further information and we, uh, we need to use as an adult and to, uh, the information we have and to adapt it uh, to, the, to the child, to be able to pass on this information. Deci, cred eu că în momentul în care am înțeles toate aceste lucruri din uh, universitate, și punând în, apl în aplicație în procesele de antrenament, am zis că cu siguranță voi reuși să fac, eu știu, niște rezultate peste ceea ce știam eu la momentul respectiv. I became confident that uh, applying all the knowledge uh, I got from the university will uh, develop uh, my uh, career and uh, it could, uh, I could end up in uh, getting more results and uh, performances uh, for my players. Okay, wonderful, amazing. So um, I think now it's time uh, to uh, return the mic to our high performance manager, Dominic. So, uh, Dominique, please take over. Thank you very much, Massimo. And uh, I would like to start uh, with Danny now. Danny, uh, I know you mentioned so far a few names of coaches which helped you, developed you in your career. But did you really have a specific mentor, specific coach who helped you to reach your level as a coach? Um, yeah, he is um, a coach from, um, he is still uh, one guy where I always can, uh, can get some information. Um, we make one time a year, we make one, uh, how do you say, uh, one overview over the last year. And he is not really was a top coach, but he's a Dutch guy. Uh, and um, because in the time when I was uh, working with the Dutch Federation and we had all this uh, kind of, um, especially in the mental way, uh, we had all these meetings. Uh, um, I learned um, the action type and action type. Uh, is about that every player has an aim for moving, learning, and doing. Everybody is moving on a different way. Everybody has a different technique. Yeah? Um, and then I met this uh, the second guy. One was the big coach of the national team of volleyball. And the second man of action type is uh, Benny Dowers. And he came also, uh, he, was for, he was from table tennis. And then I came in contact with him and um, because I think as a coach, you have to know 
uh, how your players are. Uh, you have to uh, because every player is different. Yeah, if you see in 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 moving, uh, Timo Boll has a really good top spin. Yeah, he's m more vertical. And if you have uh, Patty Baum, he is more uh, horizontal. Eh? He's m much more pressing everything. And so also players learn different. Some you can only tell, then it's okay. Some you have to um, to show with with videos or to show it by yourself. And other players, and this is important. This was my this was my step how I came in action type because in the beginning when I started as a coach. The people in, in Holland, these four or five people, they had not a really big level. But they were doing things because I was a great player. But after one, two years, I was thinking, hey, why this guy is not doing this? Yeah. And during this, I came into, into action type. And it was one player who first liked um, to try by himself. And then after two weeks, he said to me, hey, trainer, you mean this? So everybody learn different. Some you have to, to let them a little bit to try. And other players, they, uh, if you speak, it's enough. Yeah. So um, I think as a coach, you should know your players, how they, um, how you say, how they, how they learn, how they move, and how you can catch them. I mean, some players, um, before it was, uh, example, Christian Zeus, you had to make him really hot. Come on, you can do this tonight, big match with many spectators. And But to other players, if I do like this, he only get nervous. So you let him a little bit, like, like Timo Boll. He's always sitting in the hole and sometimes you think, come on, guy, make some warm-up sweat. But he need to... His senses to be open. Yeah, he watch. He's sitting in the hall and looking around. And um, you know, there's another way uh, for preparing. And I think every player um, is different. And it's also difficult for a coach, or difficult. It's good to know how what a player needs. I mean, they will not do it on my way. Yeah. Um, one more example. Uh, I like to repeat. So I came to Anton Chelberg. I say, okay, today we make one easy exercise. We play two two, two backhand, two forehand. I liked it as a player because I liked to repeat two 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 and continue. And then he said to me, I don't like this two two. It's not easy. I like to play one or two backhand or one or two forehand. Why? For him. It's much more challenge to play this exercise, and um, so I think as a coach you should know your player really good, and then I think you can catch them and to put them in his uh, in his power, in his um, I say straight uh, strength. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Danny, for the answer. And now over to Viorel. Who was your specific uh, mentor, your specific coach who helped you to reach your level? Or was there anybody or not? Or? Uh, da, nu pot să vorbesc de un singur mentor. I can't speak of a, a single mentor. Ci mentorii au, uh, au evoluat, să zic așa, după cum și eu am evoluat. Um, my mentors uh, made progress this as well as I did. Normal, primul mentor a fost antrenorul meu care mi-a uh, mi luat fața, să spun așa, prin ceea ce își dorea să facă. My first mentor was my first coach, coach uh, who impressed me um, uh, well, with uh, everything he did. Normal, acest antrenor a început cariera de antrenorat cu mine și cu, mă rog, generația mea, să zic. He started his coach career with him and his generation. The coach's name is Emilian Bacioiu. Mulți dintre dumneavoastră îl cunosc, a fost mulți ani antrenor la loturile de fete, 
chiar și de băieți la început. Many of you know him because uh, he was a uh, head coach uh, for uh, the national uh, team boys and girls uh, as well. Uh, mai târziu, când uh, eu știu, am evoluat și am început să, uh, cum să spun eu, să, să progresez ca antrenor, am avut uh, marea plăcere și satisfacție să fiu antrenorul secund și totodată să ajut ca partener la uh, lotul de senioare, atunci... Later on, uh, after uh, I made several progresses, I had the, the amazing chance to be a, a partner and a second coach um, at the national uh, senior uh, team. Atunci când uh, antrenorul principal era doamna Ela Constantinescu Țelăr. And the head coach was uh, back then uh, Mrs. Ela Țelăr Constantinescu. Fostă former, mul multiplă campioană mondială și, și europeană. Former European and the world champion. Am învățat foarte multe de la dânsa și am fost încurajat de către dânsa să, să lucrez că voi avea mari rezultate. I learned uh, many things from her and I got encouraged to pursue my, uh, my career because uh, she was um, fully confident that I will uh, get uh, results. Perioada în care, eu știu, am început să obțin rezultate la nivel uh, european, uh, am avut uh, ca mentor, să zic, pe Laurenciu Gheorghiu, When I started to um, get results at the European uh, level, uh, I had uh, as a mentor uh, Mr. Laurentiu Gheorghiu. Uh, antrenor care a activat și în Germania în Bundesliga. Uh, he was, uh, he is a coach who uh, was a coach in Bundesliga as well. Uh, apoi, uh, uh, cu dânsul normal am reușit de a câștigat în perioada 81-86 multe, multe medalii la campionatele europene de juniori și cadeți. And we managed together to win uh, many medals at European Championships uh, between uh, 1981 and 1985. Începând cu 1987 fiind antrenor principal la loturile din România, Uh, starting with uh, 1987, I became a head coach for uh, the uh, national uh, teams in Romania. Și având uh, posibilitatea de a vedea multe campionate și a participa la multe uh, cantonamente comune cu mari jucători din toată lumea. I had the opportunity to attend to many uh, European Championships and uh, to participate to um, training camps with uh, foreign uh, players and coaches. Au devenit mentor mai mulți antrenori uh, care mi-au plăcut și de la care am căutat să iau ce este mai bun sau ce mi s-a părut mie mai bun că ar, mi s-ar potrivi mie și aș put, cu care aș reuși să obțin rezultate cu sportivii mei. I uh, saw many uh, coaches and uh, I tried to took everything uh, I uh, could, uh, considered necessary and um, useful to my career and uh, to develop my uh, training skills for my players. Așa că ideea e ca mentor uh, cred eu că pot să devină uh, oameni care sunt deosebiți în orice activitate și în orice domeniu din, din viața noastră. So the main idea is uh, we can't uh, speak about a, spe a specific uh, mentor, we can consider a mentor anyone who is special in our lives uh, on uh, different areas. Okay, thank you very much for these comprehensive answers and uh, I would like to pass back now the word to Massimo. Yeah, um, and now I think uh, it's time to uh, start with some individual questions. I would start with um, uh, Viola. And um, yeah, the question is this, uh, what do you think is the biggest challenge when you, when you, coach, uh, when you coach women? And uh, what is the biggest advantage to coach women? We know that the, the, the game is not the same, you know, 
men and women play differently. So coaching is also differently. Well, from your point of view, what is the, the, the biggest challenge and the biggest advantage to coach women? Uh, it's not easy. Not is nu este ușor. Nu este ușor datorită faptului că în general eu știu fetele sunt mult mai sensibile. It's not easy mostly because the girls are usually more sensitive. În prima fază, atunci când sunt cadete și junioare, sunt mult mai conștiincioase. On the first stage, as the juniors and the cadets, they are uh, more uh, hard workers. Sunt perseverente. Perseverant. Uh, după care, în momentul în care încep să obțină rezultatele, uh, de multe ori uh, au impresia că știu tot. Then after getting, starting getting results, they had the, the impression uh, of knowing everything. Uh, și în situațiile astea, cel mai bine este să cauți o cale de mijloc, o cale. In, uh, in this situation, the best thing is uh, to look for a way some in, somewhere in between. Uh, să lași de la tine. Uh, to let some things go away. Și să continui ca să ți atingi obiectivul. And to continue your work uh, in order to achieve your goals. Uh, mai dificil este atunci când uh, Uh, nu mai lucrez continuu cu acești sportivi. The, it's, it's more difficult when uh, you stop working directly with the, these uh, players. De exemplu, marea majoritate a sportivilor din România după 18 ani, datorită uh, uh, situațiilor financiare din, din cluburile din România. As you probably know, Most of our players after um, turning 18, because of the financial situation in Romania, uh, merg la cluburi în străinătate, go to clubs uh, abroad. Uh, continuitatea aceasta nu mai există în pregătire. And uh, the continuity of uh, training uh, stops for me as a coach. Și în, în mod normal, uh, orice influență din afară provoacă, eu știu, discuții contradictorii, păreri care, eu știu, nu se mai pot rezolva atât de ușor cum se rezolva înainte când totul era sub control. And uh, we um, see clearly the influences um, of uh, the coaches or um, playmates uh, from the uh, from uh, the clubs uh, abroad. Um, and uh, from time to time, um, differences appear um, from their point of view to, uh, with our point of view. Uh, de aceea. Uh... Părerea mea este că în momentul în care ai continuitate, de când, eu știu, ai început pregătirea și până obții marele rezultat sau marele, marile rezultate, această continuitate cântărește foarte, foarte mult, continuitatea în pregătire. In my opinion, being able to watch a player from the beginning to the highest level, it's, a, it's a quite an advantage and a, it's, a, it's something that needs to be done in order to, to have this great result. Dacă ar fi să iau așa un exemplu mai edificator, as a, as a great example, Uh, Eliza Samara a început uh, cu mine tenis de masă la vârsta de 6-7 ani. Eliza started uh, playing table tennis with me since she was uh, five, six years old. Împreună cu, mă rog, antrenorii cu care eu lucrez, pentru că vreau să, să specific că toată această activitate a mea de aproape 50 de ani nu puteam să obțin rezultatele dacă nu aveam într adevăr o echipă extraordinară. And I need to make a point uh, this uh, this whole activity for almost 8 years uh, could not be possible without uh, a work team and uh, we have a great and uh, a large team in here. De antrenori, eu știu conducători de cluburi, 
staful tehnic pe care eu știu fiecare antrenor și-l dorește și și-l, și-l alege. Coach, uh, technical staff, uh, any coach would, uh, would like deci, to use. Eliza, care a început deci la 6-7 ani, a reușit să câștige deci în 2015 titlul la simplu, uh, astfel obținând toate titlurile posibile la nivel de Europa, la toate probele, atât la junior cât și la senior. Eliza managed to get the European title uh, at simple event in uh, 2015 and uh, this is how she actually got the, uh, the whole um, bunch of titles at the European level for juniors and the seniors as well. Și atunci, din asta spun că secretul pe undeva ar fi continuitatea și comuni- comunicarea continuă uh, cu sportivii pe o perioadă destul de lungă de timp, chiar dacă uh, au perioade scurte de evoluție la alte cluburi, eu știu, pentru a, a juca meciuri. This is something I consider like a, a secret, um, uh, having this... Um... Um, a period of uh, uh, constant uh, communication and constant training uh, with uh, the same coach and uh, being able to keep uh, the communication part uh, open always. Even uh, if the player start uh, for a while, let's say, play uh, in another club. Uh, we, take, uh, we, we, take, uh, we take this... Uh, Secrets <laughs> very, <laughs> very, very well because uh, so much experience and so much uh, insight information we can uh, we can uh, learn from uh, from you guys uh, and uh, guys. Tra- by the way, we have we have received uh, several questions from uh, from our attendees uh, and uh, we will give uh, answers for those. And uh, I would like to uh, to go with Danny um, very quickly. Uh, you you were talking about the the the, the Timo Ball, you know, uh, champions. How 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 is to coach them? How, how is it? You you've been coaching uh, Borussia Dusseldorf for uh, for many years. Uh, how, how is to tell us? How is to to be with the, with them to coach with them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it was uh, it was nice. I'm now 11 years in uh, in Düsseldorf, and uh, I have to make um, I signed two more years, so it's really a long time. And especially Timo, like I said before, I know him now seven years as a player and uh, 11 years uh, as a coach. And uh, yeah, of course, I know him really really good. I know when he feels well or when he don't feel well or um, and the structure in Düsseldorf is, is so good I mean uh, it's so professional and um, and it's really nice to be uh, a part of it and uh, also of course with the, with the other trainers uh, I mean of course there's always a lot of pressure but I think yeah, because we always have to win. Uh, always they they think we can we have to win this these titles and and everything. And um, but also we must not forget that the only way to to win these titles is uh, develop the players. I mean uh, you cannot only thinking about winning. You have to do something, and you have to develop your game to be a better player. And I think uh, in the past uh, you know also. Um, uh, Kamala Shanta, yeah, he uh, he developed himself and he makes some good job for us. Um, the same now is with with Anton Chelberg. Yeah, it was sometimes he was uh, on a different level and uh, okay, it's hard work and to come to this level. And I always say, I mean, this is nice to play for for medals and it gives stress yeah, and titles, but the stress is um, you have to. To go with it, yeah, you have to. I always say, um, arm the stress. I mean, you cannot put it away. You have to uh, to do something with it, and and this is why we do it. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. This to, is how to, we manage, do it. Uh, to manage the stress, right? So, yeah, very very important. Yes, please go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. 
yeah, to manage this stress and to to uh, you cannot push it away. I say this is our job. Yeah, living on the edge. I had it as a player. Uh, if you play one uh, uh, match, uh, if you win, you go to Olympics, and if you lose, you don't go. I had all these kinds of matches, and um, I mean, this is why we're doing this. That's why we're doing high-level sport, uh, and you have to, how you say, you have to see a little bit like like fun to play with this stress and this level, yeah, and. Um, and I think we always have a good team, that we uh, we have one goal, we have one team, um, we always help each other, uh, all the players and, um, and the management in uh, also in, in, in Borussia. And I think that's also a little bit the secret. And of course, uh, to win, I like to win. I always want to win. And um, <laughs> so I'm happy that we win a lot. Um, last two years, we didn't we didn't have a time a title but okay this year we this year we had uh, two titles in Champions League and in the in the cup and it was really close and um, yeah I always say we are Borussia Düsseldorf we have uh, always a good team and um, we work hard every day and then the result will will come but you have to to work clever this is uh, I think the most important and. In all my team, everybody worked a little bit on a different way. We never do all, everybody the same. And I think this is uh, really important, what I said before, that everybody has a different kind of, um, yeah, of playing, of learning, of yeah, all these kinds of things. But it's amazing yeah, it's... to work, and especially when you have, when you, when you have results, of course. I mean, uh, <laughs> that's why we... That's why I work in Düsseldorf, and but everywhere yeah, you want to make results, but also you have to 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 see okay, this is the line with players, and you have a goal, you want to go there. What you need exactly to come there, and and this is really interested in my in my job to 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 make a path for every different player. Great, great. Congratulations, congratulations for all your achievement. Um, um, over to Dominic. Hey Massimo, uh, my question is now uh, to Viorel. Uh, Viorel, uh, what do you think is the most important quality a coach should possess? Um... Da, bună întrebare. It's a good question. <laughs> I know, Piki. Um, cred că adaptabilitatea, puterea de a te adapta cerințelor fiecărui jucător. Uh, I think that uh, the ability at um, adapting yourself to the um, particularities of, uh, and possibilities of every player. Uh, possibility de a, de a cunoaște acel jucător. The possibility of knowing that player. Și de a găsi deci soluțiile cele mai bune atât din punct de vedere tehnic cât și Tactic. And uh, finding the best solution uh, technically and tactically speaking. Uh, cred eu că aici pe undeva se învârte secretul mare de a fi mare antrenor. I think this could be the secret to become and uh, to be a successful uh, coach. Deoarece în momentul de față uh, eu știu modalitățile acestea de informare și de comunicare au progresat și există atât de multă informație la nivel mondial. Because uh, at this time uh, there is so, so much information uh, globally speaking and so many modern ways of communication. Uh, ar fi foarte ușor să iei, uh, să vezi tot felul de metode de pregătire a diferitilor sportivi It would be so easy just to see different ways and approaches uh, for training. Și să aplici cu jucătorii tăi. And uh, apply them with uh, your players. Părerea mea că nu este suficient și în mod sigur nu e suficient. In my opinion, this is not uh, certainly enough. 
Și important este să preiei ce este mai potrivit acelor jucătorilor tăi. But the important thing is uh, to take what is uh, useful uh, for uh, your player. Și să adaptezi totul astfel încât să, uh, cum să spun eu, să scoți totul de la jucătorul tău, ca el să poată să dea absolut tot pentru marea performanță. And uh, to be able to individualize uh, the training uh, so that uh, can your player uh, be able to give uh, the best in, uh, in a competition. Cred că aici ar fi esența în uh, uh, atul cel mai important al antrenorului. I think this could be the essence, the most important thing for a coach. Good. Okay, thank you very much for the comprehensive answer. And uh, now one question for Denny. Denny, uh, the table tennis has developed a lot going through the many changes. If you have to look 10-15 years back, what, what has changed in, in your opinion in the preparation and the coaching compared to those times? Uh, in those times. Oh, this is for Danny. It's for Danny. The question. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Danny, go on. Sorry. One more time, the, the question, please. Yeah. Can yes. you give me one uh, more time, the question? Yes, yes, of course. Table tennis has developed a lot going through the many changes. You know, if you have to look uh, 10, 15 years back, what has changed in your opinion in the preparation and the coaching compared to those times? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I must say um, I try to change um, completely uh, how I was um, as a player, I mean, in many times there, when I was playing for the national team, it was, um, yeah, now there's much more knowledge about the, the, the mental way and these kinds of things. I mean, um, how I was treated before, I will never uh, do this uh, with my player. I mean, it was... Um, Like I said, individualization was in that time not so much in my time. Everybody did the same. Um, it was, um, eh, if you see example, like uh, uh, when you look a little bit out of the court eh, and they always say to you, ah, you must stay into the court, you must stay in the cocon eh, and, and like this. And um, But if you see Timo Boll now, yeah, when he... Uh, want to refocus, he is looking around, you know, this is the best for him. And I think in these kinds of things, um, I tried uh, I, I tried also to, to, to make a change. I mean, as a coach, you can be always right. I say this also to my players. I can say, uh, like it was with me in the newspaper, uh, Danny Heister is mental bad, yeah? And when I play bad, then the coach can say, look, I'm right, he is bad. And if he play good and I won, then the coach could say, look, I try to... Um, uh, coach can be always right, yeah? that you say, like I said in this. And this is not the way uh, I want it. So I learned also from my time as player Uh, for me, that it's not the good way, and um, I try to to make um, my players that they really think about themselves, that they make thoughts about table tennis, that how they can progress, and um, and not that you must do this or you must do that. I think also with children and also with young players. They have unbelievable good ideas where you can, uh, yeah, where you can do something with. And if it's coming really from inside, from the player, um, um, it's much more easy and, and much better than only to say you must do this or you must do that. Yeah, that's a little bit my thinking how yeah. it was before as a player in the past. Yeah. And uh, like I want to work. Um, in that kind of way. 
Okay, thank you. So more about the, the mental aspect, uh, the biggest changes for you. Okay, thank you very much, Danny. And uh, yeah. yeah, now it's time for the question and answer part of the webinar. And uh, I would like to pass back the word to Massimo. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dominique. Uh, yeah, well, well, time is flying. And obviously, when we have great personalities like uh, Danny and uh, Viorel, uh, it's, it's quite normal to learn and to listen to their experience uh, and so many uh, good things uh, they, have, uh, they have gone through. Um, so we have a few questions. I would start, Dominique, with uh, Andrew Gambina. Um, maybe we can start uh, with uh, with you, Fiorel. Uh, what are the, the the key areas a coach should focus uh, on for a beginner level students? Um. La ce vârstă? Ce, ce înseamnă acest începător? Un începător, un copil care începe la 5-6 ani sau un copil care deja joacă ceva și... A, ce, antrenorul, a, scuzați. Normal, deci normal, antrenorii trebuie să depisteze calitățile motrice în primul rând. Uh, coaches uh, must identify uh, at first uh, the physical qualities, motrical qualities, uh, motric qualities. Deci pentru asta uh, el trebuie să cunoască în primul rând ce, ce vrea. He must know what he really wants. Spre deosebire de un profesor de educat de sport sau de educație fizică din școală, Unlike, um, sport teacher, care se ocupă de general, de sportul în general, who does, uh, everything related to the sport in general, antrenorul de tenis de masă trebuie să descopere acele calități, the table tennis coach must identify, discover the specific qualities, specia speciale sportului nostru, de tenis de masă, uh, especially for table tennis. În principal, viteză, speed, îndemânare, uh, skill, posibilitate de a, a se concentra focus, the ability to concentrate himself, și dorința de a munci. And, uh, the desire to work. Dacă el nu dorește să muncească, degeaba... If he's not will, uh, if he's not willing to work, Degeaba găsește în acel sportiv toate calitățile. It's not enough to have the, all the qualities uh, in that uh, um, child. Deci antrenorul, în primul rând, asta trebuie să descopere. Dacă este capabil să facă acest lucru, This is what the coach must um, identify and discover if the child is capable to do, uh, to play table tennis. Are materia primă de a o prelucra și de a obține un produs finit de înaltă calitate. If uh, the um, coach is able to discover all these things and uh, especially the willing to work, he has all he needs to uh, develop yes. the child and to help him grow. Okay. Okay. Hey, how about you, Danny? What do you think? You also you work with the with the, the young players. So, what do you think are the the key uh, areas a coach should focus with the beginners? Consistency, uh, physical. Do you agree with uh, Viorel? Um, I agree with Viorel exactly what he said. And um, the main thing is in the end and. You can maybe underscribe this. Um, when I was um, cadet and junior, um, Trinko Kane and me, we were number four and five, or from the from the young players. And um, there were many players who had an unbelievable good hand, yeah, unbelievable good feeling. You know the names, Bart van Haren. 
uh, we had Giet Fahag, yeah, they they were better and they were the talents, yeah, they were the talents and Trinko Kane and me, we were pff, we were not so good. You're only a player, you bring ball back on the table and uh, uh, yeah, but the others are much better. They have good service and and everything. The desire to work, this is for me what uh, Viral also said. This is, in the end, the workers who work hard, they will survive. If you have the golden hand to play table tennis, or Nothing. but if you don't want to practice, if you don't want to practice four or five hours a day, <laughs> uh, also when you are young, you can um, you cannot survive. So this is the um, yeah. Uh, for me, the most important thing uh, uh, to push through. Also, when you have some uh, deception, like I was, they didn't qualify me for one European Championships in '85 in Den Haag, and I could go with the junior team to to go. Yeah, uh, but like I said, there is some some problem or whatever, and then to come back and to um, and the hard workers will survive, and not only the the people with the like I always say the golden hand and the best feeling. If you don't want to work, you have no chance in table tennis. So so hard work is a, is a must have if you want to uh, you know survive or you want to uh, aspire to succeed. So um, we have uh, we have more uh, back to Dominic. Go ahead. Thank you, Massimo. Thank you. Uh, and I would like to stay firstly with Denny. And uh, Denny, the question is from Katia Mifsud, and uh, she would like to know. Many people say that to be a good coach, you need to be first a top player. What is your opinion on this? Um, what is my opinion? Um, I think we have some problem connection. Maybe with my life. Then we have a problem with your you connection. Now it's okay. Now it's okay again. You can continue. Okay. Then I try to do it fast. <laughs> um, yes. No, my, my my point of view is uh, it can help. I mean, the the play. I know exactly what the players feel when they have a match point or uh, when they lost a match. Or uh, you also, I had also then this this feelings. Uh, and of course, you know a lot about table tennis because you were a player. Yeah, when you were a player, you learn a lot from many coaches and from many things. So you have, of course, a bagage to bring to you as coach. But like I said, a good player will be not definitely a good coach. As coach, you also have to develop always. I mean, uh, I cannot do it like five years ago or like ten years ago. You always have to find a way to try to to innovate or to make to try some new things. Uh, you cannot do it always the same and always to. To look exactly on this player, yeah, I'm always responsible for three, four, five players. Um, how I can this guy yeah, uh, this summer also thinking about Kelbeck, how we can develop more? How yeah, and then you go really deep in, and then I go to my mentor also. This what I said, this guy Benny Dowers from Action Type. For what what I can do better, what I must do better, what the player must do better. I mean. You always have to develop. I always say to my players, of course, you have to develop, but also I must develop. Yeah? yeah. And one more important thing, what I like, what I want is also that the players give me feedback. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, then you can really work as a team to the goal. And the goal most of the time is, of course, to win titles, but first the players must develop and must be ready on the exact day where where you have to uh, play your good matches. Okay. So it can help. Thank you, Christian. It can help, but a good player is not definitely directly a good coach. It's uh, it takes time, and it's, it takes experience. 
I agree with you and thank you for your opinion. And uh, Viorel, the last word is yours regarding this question, please. Părerea mea este că un antrenor are nevoie de a fi jucat ceva înainte. In my opinion, a coach must have been played before. Să înțeleagă exact ce se întâmplă, de exemplu, la 10-9 sau la scorul de 11-11. Fully understand what is going on on a key score. Deci, cineva care a trecut prin aceste situații someone who's, uh, who's been uh, through these uh, situations. Indiferent dacă la cel mai înalt nivel sau la un nivel peste mediu. Regardless uh, the levels, uh, the level, uh, speaking of the highest one or the um, uh, leverage one. În mod sigur are ce să-i spună oricărui jucător. He has something to say to any player for sure. Dacă nu a jucat tenis de masă, If uh, he didn't play teni table tennis at all, pentru că sunt destui antrenori și de genul acesta, because we know such coaches, părerea mea că are acces de a fi un, să zicem, mare antrenor până la un nivel, până la un anumit nivel. In my opinion, uh, he could uh, reach um, a leverage um, level. In my opinion, not to be to be able to become. Uh, a high level coach. Și sunt destui antrenori care au descoperit mari talente, i-a format ca jucători până la un nivel. And uh, we can speak about many coaches who uh, discovered uh, talents and uh, have been able to develop them up to a certain point. După care a dat, a dat drumul jucătorului să meargă acolo unde ar putea fi ajutat, exact cum zicea și Deni înainte. And uh, then uh, he allowed the player to go further to um, a better coach, just like um, Deni said before. Deci putem concluziona pe undeva că pot fi antrenori foarte buni până la un an, anumit nivel pentru a descoperi talente și de a-i forma până la un anumit nivel. So we can uh, make a conclusion about uh, this, uh, this topic. Um, we can talk about uh, coaches uh, who are able to discover and uh, grow talents or uh, players up a certain level. Uh, după care, normal, trebuie să găsiți alți antrenori care pot să uh, dea un, uh, eu știu, un plus de tehnicitate și de cunoștințe pentru a, a face ca acel jucător să devină într-adevăr o stea. Then uh, we must find uh, better coaches in order to be able to find uh, the specific uh, issue, the specific um, uh, techniques and um, abilities to develop the, um, the player in order to become a star. Uh, okay. Dacă ar fi să vorbesc de mine, If uh, I am uh, talk, I, if I'm talking about myself, din totdeauna mi-a plăcut să lucrez cu copii, să să îi învăț. I always uh, liked working with children to teach them. Să îi să îi descoper, să îi învăț, mai bine zis. To discover them and to help them learn. După care să îl duc mai departe. And then, uh, then. Um, Uh, be with uh, him or her uh, up to the end. Nu este un lucru foarte okay. ușor, necesită foarte, foarte mult uh, energie și foarte mult uh, efort. It's not uh, easy and uh, it requires a lot of time and energy. Dar pe undeva nimeni nu va cunoaște acel sportiv mai bine decât tine care pe undeva l-ai descoperit. But in the end no one would know better than you who discovered and uh, help him grow uh, will know better uh, the best the, that uh, specific uh, player. Okay, thank you very much for your opinion and uh, I would like to take this chance to thank you uh, Viorel, uh, dear Danny and also dear Mrs. Miora 
we, the entire IDTF HPD team, we thank you a lot for taking the time to be here today and sharing your vast knowledge, your expertise, your experience regarding uh, coaching in general and uh, the topic, coaching pathway. So thank you very much again from our side. And uh, thanks also to our audience for attending and we hope you enjoyed our 38 ITTF HPD Table Tennis at your fingertips webinar. And I'm looking forward to announce the next webinar, which will be held next week on Wednesday, the 17th February at 2 p.m. Central European time. And we will have a great uh, guest. It's Claudia Herweg from Germany, the ITTF Head of Equipment. And uh, she will talk about the world of the table tennis rubber. So stay tuned and don't forget to sign up for our next webinar. And that's all from my side for today. And stay safe, healthy. And I kindly ask now my dear colleague Massimo for his closing words. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dominique. Uh, well, thank you, Danny. Thank you, uh, Viorel, Mura, for uh, your precious time. It was a great interaction, and uh, we understand that we need uh, actually more time to, to, to get, uh, you know, uh, your, uh, your uh, unbelievable great knowledge, as uh, Dominique said, vast knowledge. And I, I hope the audience uh, today and you know, all attendees uh, uh, liked it, like I liked it very much. Thank you for your time again. So giving you the appointment for the next week uh, with uh, finally talking about uh, equipment in table tennis with Claudia Erweg. And uh, again, thank you very much and uh, see you next time. Ciao. Thank you, bye bye.